Nishchal Maheshwari, CEO at Centrum Broking, joins us right now on the show. Nishchal, as always, good having you. Thanks much for taking the time out. Um, what, what does the setup look like, Nishchal? I mean, we had four strong corrective days before that big move on Wednesday, and suddenly we had a bit of a pullback in trade yesterday. After, and now there's a 350-point rally on the bank nifty. If there is one thing that is there, there is volatility. So I think uh, there is a lot of fear in the market actually and uh, I think some of that is unwarranted. Now if you really, really look at yesterday's index in bank, I think it's a decent set of numbers given the current circumstances. But just because uh, the bank missed on the PAT number and then they realized later on basically the 335 crores was actually taken to increase the PCR. Uh, the market just punished it very severely. 6% down on a bank basically, which has grown in this kind of a trying time at 20%. So I think the market is, is, is being driven by fear at the moment. And I think that is what is giving you opportunities in this kind of a market. Uh, that you should go out and look at for uh, stocks like Indusind. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, are, are you, are you, it, would that be the template, Nishchal, this time around? That we know that the headline numbers for some of these banks, maybe, or some of the stocks at large in quarter two may not be the most positive, but quarter three, quarter four, with the tax cuts and some of the other benefits coming in, maybe the numbers improve and therefore try and buy into the weakness? So, my view remains to be basically, I think the valuations are quite quite attractive at these prices basically and uh, that should be the uh, bench, uh, that should be the benchmark for you to actually start acquiring some of these stocks now i don't know basically whether the um, uh, a change will happen uh, in, in a quarter or two quarters uh, but i am very sure basically that uh, these valuations you may not see again so it is better basically that you have a benchmark for valuations and you um, uh, start looking out for those stocks I think like something like Indescent Bank basically which is corrected from 17, 1800 to whatever levels to 1200. So it's quite a bit of a correction basically. I think the bank management is doing a pretty decent job out there uh, giving the trying times with the broader economy is facing. So it, it makes sense basically to identify some of these stocks and actually uh, keep on acquiring them. You, you sanguine on the other uh, non-Kotak, non-HDFC bank uh, variety as well, Nishchal. I mean, Axis post the QIP, there has been a bit of a uh, corrective move. ICICI Bank, while has done well, hasn't really set the stage on fire. Would you go out and try and buy some of the other corporate-facing banks as well? Definitely. Definitely. I think ICICI and Axis are uh, up there on my uh, list, basically. So, these are two or three banks basically besides the top ones basically which I should be looking at. Uh, rather, I would be actually avoiding the HDFC and Kotaks basically in favor of them given the kind of valuation gap now uh, which has emerged between the two. Okay, that's an interesting call. The other one, uh, Nishal, is, is IT and uh, how have you read into what TCS's commentary was? Could that be true for the sector at large and therefore would you stay away in a, in a space which is while throwing up cash flows, not really showing uh, some tremendously high growth. So, uh, I think IT you should be neutral if you have been o overweight or underweight basically because uh, there are two things. So, IT I don't think so there is great growth coming in and basically I think TV says yesterday anyway uh, put that out and you have a huge amount of uncertainty across the world. And uh, even if you look at it, uh, the IMF chief, I think a couple of days back, basically she has been very, very vocal in saying that the world is actually uh, going to be slowing down. So in that kind of a scenario, you cannot be very, very positive on the growth on the IT sector, but having the valuations are in your favor and this is a good hiding place. So I think uh, that is the uh, other two things basically which is in favor. So I think at best neutral in this space. Uh, TCS yesterday results were uh, pretty bad. Uh, I don't think so. This is going to be just a loan one-off, but it is also setting the trend for the whole sector. So there is growth challenges for the sector. There is no doubt about that. Mm. 
you know the other thing what's happening in the markets uh, is the kind of moves that some of these companies which get added to MSCI in whatever shape or form are making we've seen this um, uh, thing with Bandhan Bank as well I think the news the only news that I have at hand right now that Bandhan Bank might be added to the MSCI index which leads to an estimated 180 million dollars of inflows on close of 15th October but look at that move that and this was up 5% in trade yesterday so some people probably uh, Kind of got to know and they logged on and in today's session another 20 percent and it's having its impact on growth finance as well clearly the two stocks of the morning so those are the ones which are doing well in addition to that uh, metals are not doing too poorly uh, initial i reckon in part due to some positive commentary from donald trump on uh, the trade uh, conversations but they've been fairly choppy and with a downward bias are valuations in your favor because when we did a small study it seemed to suggest that from these valuations typically in the previous cycles or the dating over the last 15 years uh, steel companies have tended to bounce back I agree with you basically I think uh, if you have some amount of semblance uh, as far as the uh, this uh, uh, US China trade uh, outcome happens uh, if if you have some there uh, some semblance out there, basically I think uh, valuation seems to be in favour. So mm. one can have, hold a sort of a neutral position in metals. Okay. Uh, now Nishal, I remember a few years ago. I mean, uh, in your in your earlier organisation where you were at the helm, you were you guys were amongst the first ones to come out with this big. Uh, uh, coverage on specialty chemical companies not too many people spoke about those companies then except for a few portfolio managers now they become center stage and we keep on seeing a sporadic moves from one or the other names and most of them are trading close to 52 week highs or life highs how constructive are you in your in your, in your, in your current organization on that space uh, what what do you guys like what do you guys dislike So we continue to like uh, the specialty chemical space uh, basically because we believe that this is a multi-year story uh, because that the tra uh, transition which is happening from uh, China to India will continue to happen and uh, still we have seen uh, very early stages. So these, these cycles uh, do not happen for like 3, 4, 5 years. This is like 15, 20 year kind of a cycle where the continuous movement will keep on happening from China towards India and to other countries basically and this is largely because China is cutting down on uh, whatever pollution or whatever it is. So I think these are multi-year cycles which will happen and I don't believe that uh, these guys, uh, these companies are only for a 2-3 year kind of a up, up move. So these are long term up moves basically and we continue to like the space. Uh, though we do not have it under coverage but I think the companies which I like there I still continue to like them. It was the RT Industries. Uh, the SRFs and uh, of this world basically these are the com companies which we continue to like there and we continue to like today also would you try and be a brave art and try and find favor in any of these real estate exposed NBFCs because we see the pain continuing in today's session as well for India Bulls and there might be some uh, uh, semblance of sanity in an Edelweiss or a Piramal today but otherwise they have seen some seen a fair degree of pressure So I think uh, a market has to realize that uh, exposure in real estate doesn't mean an NPA. So that is what I think, uh, that's what I was saying that it's fear which is driving it. Now even if you, in case of Indescent, the bank came out very clearly saying that 3.8% of the book is in uh, real estate and everybody just went on saying that whole, maybe 50% of that book is, is zero. So I understand the real estate at the moment is uh, illiquid. But it is not a zero asset and that is what the market has to realize basically. Now as soon as we start seeing some uh, uh, economic uptake, some uh, uh, buying in the real estate, you will once again start seeing these assets moving uh, 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 to maybe uh, a non-NPA kind of a category. Yes, there are challenges at the moment. The only thing remains to be whether uh, the, the challenges will outline the liquidity of these companies or not. Okay, Nishal, one, one final question really on this conversation and that's on telcos because that's that big talking point for the last two or three sessions. Are you guys constructive there? Would you believe there is fundamental merit in trying and going out and buying or investing into a Bharti Airtel or a Reliance Industries for that matter? 
Yeah, so our topic has always been Reliance Industries for a long period of time and that too on the Reliance Geo franchise and I think uh, they have continued to do so. Uh, the recent move where the Reliance has said that they will pass on the IUC charges uh, to the investor uh, actually indicates and I think the market is uh, rightly taken saying that this is the first move basically where they are saying that they are looking to increase their ARPUs and that should be the positive, very very positive for the industry. Uh, given there has been a huge and long and bloody price war which has been there, uh, I think that is coming to an end. And if you remember basically when uh, Reliance put out their broadband charges, I think the indication was very clearly there. They were not aggressively priced. They were more or less closely priced to the mar current market prices for the broadband. And that was maybe signing, a, uh, it was a clear sign saying that uh, no more price wars basically we are looking to be more profitable in this industry. So I think if, in, if you look at it, the whole scenario, I think a huge amount of consolidation has already happened. Uh, there are now only three players, significant players in the industry and uh, uh, compared to seven, eight, nine earlier. So I think uh, the reverse is behind us. There is no doubt about that.